Hey y'all, I'm going to do a quick devotion um, <clears throat> today and I will hopefully upload it today and um, I've done quite a few videos um, this morning but it was for my beauty channel and I thought I need to do some time with my pure Bible and get caught up on this channel and um, today <clears throat> I want to talk to you if you want to write down the scripture um, it's Psalm 39, 7. Psalm 39, 7. And this is part of my Your Name. And all it is is this little notebook puts the... It's not about God's name. Um, that's what I would have thought Your Name was about. But it's about putting your personal name in with the Scripture. Not to rewrite Scripture, to personalize it for you. Even though I already know the Bible is written to me, um, I do kind of like it. So the way this reads is... <clears throat> Um, Psalm 39, 7, again, if you want to write that down in your little notebook, um, says, my hope is in you, and it's in quotes, said Beth, <laughs> my hope is in God, and that is how I feel. Um, I've recently, I've talked about this on another video, but I've recently experienced the death of a loved one from one of my friends. It was her family member, and... Um, whether you're young, people act like just because you get older that that's the people that um, are really touched by death. And it's like, well, young people experience deaths too. And it's, I think it's harder because they don't understand life yet. Much less um, as we get older, we, we do start thinking about death. And um, I mean, we want to be comfortable here because our flesh wants that. But um, that's not what God wants. Um, because of sin, this earth is, um, it's doomed. It's, um, and it's us that did it. Don't get mad at God. We did it as mankind. He had it perfected. It was, um, it was made for us, the animals and all the beautiful nature that we enjoy. The reason we enjoy it is he made us. He made it for us to enjoy. So it does, it works. It, we do enjoy it. Um, but we turned on him. And when we let sin enter the world by listening to another voice than God, when we betray God, then there is a price to pay for that sin. God can't let sin reign forever, or else it would this would be destroyed forever. All the, the the wrong that we see in the world is all a result from that sin, that original sin. Both in nature, the animal kingdom, the the um, elements of the of the earth, <clears throat> and also the. Um, really the curse of man on ourselves, just the way that we act towards each other and um, and towards that which was meant to make us happy, animals and the beauty of nature, but most of all, God. And God said, well, you know, I can't have you eternally like this. So you're kicked out. So we got kicked out of the garden Then, uh, and an angel was placed there to keep us from being able to ever come back. Why? Because the, there was the tree of life <clears throat> But there's also an eternalness there. And it's like, okay, so that has to be protected so that sin cannot be eternal. And um, God also made, uh, from the very beginning, he knew that we would fail him. And he made a counter for what we did to him. Um, and what was the counter? Well, he already had a plan that would be a sacrifice for the sin. You think, well, why do you need a sacrifice? Well, God, well, God makes some kind of a rule like that. Well, when he made us, he put our life in our blood. So sin equals death. And to get life back, you would have to have blood. And so it's a blood sacrifice. And of course, bloody's, blood is bloody. Blood uh, is scary. Uh, it's gross. Uh, why? Because when we see blood spilled, we realize life is leaving. That's where our life is. And so it's frightening. And um, God would not have had this to happen. He didn't want this to happen. But the reason he allowed for mankind, woman and man, to both sin against him is because he had to allow them free will. And given free will, he also knew that they might listen to another voice. He knew, not might, he knew they would listen to another voice. And they need to understand the absolute destruction of doing that. And... Um, it's sort of like when your your parents says, don't run out in the street and um, 
it's because your parent knows if you do that and a car comes, it would mean your utter destruction. So your mean old parent might spank your butt if you go near the edge of that street trying to protect you from that happening. And you may not understand it. And it's just this the same thing. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. We can only, tip of the iceberg maybe even, um, understand him and why he does what he does. But that may be an analogy that might help you. And so we know that death exists. God hates it. That's why he was willing to go to the cross to stop it and give us another avenue uh, back to him because he loves us so much. He adores us. If you ever feel unloved, you're not. Your God adores you. Turn him and make him your personal Savior and your personal God and say, I choose you. You chose me. Now I choose you. And you can have a full relationship with him. Um, and, and through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, my great God and Savior. Um, and the work that he did on the cross for me is, is enough. I don't need anything else except to place my life in his control. I give up being my God. That's what Eve did wrong. Instead of listening to God, she became her own God and she listened to another voice. <clears throat> and, um, but we can turn our lives back over to God through Jesus Christ. Uh, he is that blood sacrifice. That's why he had to come here and take on flesh so he could bleed. And that's the blood sacrifice that is required. And it's the perfect sacrifice. It's enough. You, you don't need any more sacrifices because he is perfect and his sacrifice was perfect. So, um, Psalm 39, 7 says that my hope is in you. And that means that my hope to evade the, um, the wrath of God, people are, get mixed up. They think that what they want to get away from is Satan. Well, of course, cause he's the enemy, but the ultimate thing you want to get away from, you want to evade altogether is the wrath of God for sin, which is death, which is utter punishment deserved, deserved for betraying him. But he loved us enough that even though we betrayed him, we were not trustworthy at all. He is. He gave us this one more chance. He should have destroyed us all together. He should have destroyed Eve and Edmund all over because there would have not been a mankind. Um, because it took Eve to make the reproduction of, of, of human beings. Um, he, we just kept getting worse after that. And he should have destroyed us again. But he, Noah lived in a right relationship with God. And so he decided, I love Noah. I'll do it through Noah's family. But I'm destroying everything else. Everything that was made for man. And that's why it bothered me. I was like, God, why would you kill the animals? It was all made for man. The sin was on everything. Everything that had been put under Adam's control. And Adam that wasn't, was, was charged with naming the animals and then being under his control. All of nature. God allowed man quite a bit and we betrayed him. And for that betrayal, that loss of trust, that permanent loss of trust, if you've ever uh, had someone blow your trust, you know it's, it's blown. You can um, try to trust again and it's very nice of you to do that, but you'll always deep down kind of wonder, are they going to betray your trust again? That's just the nature of us as fallen people. We can't even fully forgive, whereas God can forgive. And he can truly forget. He could teach us how to do it. It's just very, very hard as flawed human beings to do what God does. And that is, he throws our sin as far as the east is from the west, never circling, uh, only going linear, meaning they will never meet up again. So if you've sinned and you've asked God to forgive it, and then you, and he forgives you completely in the way that only God can, and then you ask him about it again, he genuinely does not know what you're talking about because of his perfect ability to completely forget your sin and apply the blood of Jesus over your life. So now he sees you as um, that person forgiven. Um, but one of the things in Psalm 39 that comes up about placing your hope, all of your hope in God, in, in the fact what Jesus did on the cross, that he's saying, hey, you will be spared my wrath. You will be spared what you deserve uh, for sinning against me because of what my son did for you. And, um, but the psalmist said, which we think is David, um, he bemoans his own suffering, his own ending. His, he says, uh, <clears throat> earlier in the psalm, he says, show me Lord my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. You've made my days a mere handbreadth, a span 
of my years is nothing before you. Everything is but a breath, even to those who seem secure. Um, life is short. Um, another place in the Bible tells us that it's, uh, it's 60 to, I think it's 70 to 80 days are the numbers of a man. Why does it tell us that? Is it trying to scare us? No. Even if we live a whole century, even if we live 100. My dad's 94, 93, he'll be 94 this year. Our earthly life is a tiny dot in time, an eternity. Um, but even though it's short, even though that we know the end is coming, our lives do have meaning. Um, our bodies will waste away, the Bible tells us that, and... Um, Matter of fact, I believe it's in 2 Corinthians um, 4 that the Bible tells us that though our bodies are wasting away inwardly, we're being renewed day by day. Um, and that one day we will receive eternal life with Him so that this, while this is a drop in the bucket, what we're going to get after this is even better. And it, it's not tainted by sin anymore, y'all. Um... And we know that God has given us His Spirit, which will guarantee this for us. Okay, so when we see someone die, a loved one or even a stranger that makes us kind of stop and think about death, when we see a tragic accident or an illness or whatever it is, um, especially if we feel like someone's life was taken so soon, you have to trust God on the timing. Ecclesiastes says there is a time to be born and a time to die. Um... But I hope you find a comfort and um, meaning of your life that you're sharing this life with God. First of all, to give your life to Him. That's the first thing. And then have an ongoing relationship that starts from that moment and goes to eternity. From here in the flesh to the Spirit and then to our new bodies. So um, I just pray that you will thank God that this life is not all there is and that He loves us that much to give us another chance. Okay, I love you guys, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye! Bye, 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 bye.